Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another session with RBC. My name is Anya Siddiqui, and joining us again is Vivian Lee. Hi, Vivian. Hello. Always nice to have you back. Um, Vivian is going to be talking about um, how to approach the Canadian recruitment process and how it works. Um, I I'm always happy to be back uh, for the Access webinars. And um, my name is Vivian Lee. I work for RBC's inclusive recruitment team. So um, I, uh, we have a small team at RBC uh, within the uh, global recruitment. Uh, what my team does is we go out to different diverse communities, such as um, newcomer communities, uh, persons with disabilities, indigenous. Uh, sometimes we target uh, specifically female and uh, people from the LGBT group. And um, so we um, try to bring uh, diversity of thought into RBC um, and um, we host events, we partner with uh, some external uh, job agencies like Access Employment uh, to try to provide a job searching tips to help our uh, candidates from diverse communities to, to launch their career. Uh, with RBC. Um, as uh, for myself, I am an immigrant myself. That's why this topic is so close to heart because I went through this uh, very similar journey like yourself when uh, when searching for jobs. So when I first arrived, and uh, even for the career development piece, right, um, that was a constant learning experience for me. So I'm very fortunate to be in a position to to give back to our newcomers community and I. No, and RBC knows there are a lot of talented individuals out there, um, and uh, we are uh, here ready to, to help. And uh, whether you're in, in the future you're employed with RBC, which is great, or uh, you're hired by another employer, um, we, we're very happy to be here, uh, share some of the, uh, the tips that we have learned, um, and uh, hopefully it will help you in your job searching journey. So Sonia, um, do you want to move to the next slide? Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about RBC. Uh, we are very proud uh, to be rated as uh, Canada's most uh, valuable brand. We are also uh, just recently, a couple of months ago, uh, rated by LinkedIn, uh, the Canada's number one employer. So. Um, and uh, you can see a lot of the, the words at the bottom, the great uh, place to work, Canada's best employer, and the uh, best diversity employer. And uh, what I want to folks, uh, you know, highlight is behind all those awards are um, a very high performing team. We have um, 80,000 employees uh, all over uh, the world, actually. Uh, of course, the majority of our, um, my colleagues are in Canada, but we actually um, operate in 37 countries. The majority of our businesses are uh, personal and commercial banking, investor, treasure services. We have capital markets, wealth management, and insurance. So capital markets, wealth management, um, and also um, investor treasure services, uh, we have operations uh, actually globally, um, and uh, um, insurance and the PNCB personal and commercial are uh, in, uh, within Canada. Uh, but in addition to those, we also have a very big finance department. We have HR, we have a technology um, department, and RBC is trying to uh, is actually leading the way and transferring uh, transforming the bank into technology enabled bank to create a different customer experience for our clients. Um, so that's why we're always uh, uh, looking for great uh, IT talent as well. Yeah. So I want to, uh, Sonia, if you don't mind, pass um, to the next slide. I want to talk a little bit about our diversity um, and inclusion co commitment. So we, uh, as Canada's best diversity employer, we actually um, have are leading the way in, in a lot of these diversity spaces. For example, over 60% uh, of our employees are females, um, and we're trying to uh, work on 50 50 uh, percenting at the for women uh, and men uh, you know um, a equal split at the executive level right now we're at 45 percent so still we're uh, on our way and also uh, so a lot of uh, you know uh, the uh, Canadian workforce are becoming more and more diverse and we know immigrants played a very important part 
Um, and the most of the immigrants fall under the category of the visible minorities, that's the Canadian uh, employment uh, uh, law definition uh, means like if you're not white by color and non-Caucasian by, uh, by race. So uh, Canada's visible minority representation is around 25%. Um, and RBC has the 35%. So a lot of our recent focus have been on the uh, um, on the promotion and the development of our immigrant employees for more senior leadership levels. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is uh, you know uh, we have a lot of employee resource groups. So uh, you know if you join us and then you have the option to join either one of them or many of them, depending on which area of interest. So uh, we have the special uh, groups of supporting women, of visible minorities, and newcomers, um, LGBTQ uh, plus group, and uh, person with disabilities, indigenous, and um, um, veterans work globally. Um, so those groups that really help employees with their personal uh, networking and the development, we host a lot of different events. Um, so it's like a, a huge, a big community, but a very diverse. Um, yeah, so that's our commitment. Um, as far as newcomers are concerned, we, in the last two years, I would say last two, three years, we have a lot of focus um, on the building the newcomer strategy and then we support newcomers in their job searching journey. Uh, Sonia, can you move on to the um, next slide, please? Yeah, so for example, in um, April, we, we held a very, our, I would say the largest event so far, um, you know, for newcomer job seekers. Um, we had, uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Sonia, we had uh, invited um, 120 talented newcomers to join us. And at this time, we actually focus on those high volume roles. Because we understand a lot, there are a lot of talented individuals in finance, in audit, in uh, um, in other areas that are um, you have multiple years of experience, but um, you know uh, coming to Canada and finding a job that's in your field can be very very challenging. That's why we we focus on that. Um, so another thing is that we have a newcomer. RBC has a, a very uh, um, had this innovative way of engaging our uh, clients as well as the just newcomers in general. We created this new concept called Newcomer Meeting Place where you can come. Um, there's one location uh, in partnership with, with Access Employment actually in the uh, Richmond Hill location of Markham. Is it? <laughs> I, I don't quite remember, but it's, it's up north somewhere. Um, there's another location in, in Brampton. So we provide you advice um, beyond banking, so you can come to us for anything. Uh, just I need some help with job searching. I need to help uh, um, how to navigate the Canadian uh, uh, different kinds of systems. Uh, we host the workshops, so um, it's our way of uh, showing our support to the newcomer community of uh, giving back uh, because that's very important to to us uh, as a company and to a lot of employees because. We serve our uh, clients in over 200 languages, and the, a lot of the, the people who can speak those languages are from the newcomer community, so just like yourself. Yeah, so I, that's a little bit about RBC and our commitment to uh, diversity. And uh, so I usually when we go out to different um, communities, and what we get asked most um, is the Canadian recruitment process, right? So I want to touch on. How you know how does the job searching look like in Canada, and um, what are the some you know key steps I want to um, just go a little bit into more detail. So um, application. So people might ask, so where do I apply? So I would just say 99% of the jobs are on online. So it's not like we have a secret job and we won't post. Uh, we uh, follow very strict um, uh, government requirements to post, um, um, you know, uh, our jobs on our uh, public job site. You can find them on LinkedIn. You can you can also maybe bookmark the RBC job uh, job site. Uh, um, you can just Google RBC job and our job site will pop up, right? Um, so you apply online. Um, 
And uh, it's always uh, it's always good to uh, set up the job alert because uh, uh, sometimes you might not have time to, you know, to check in all the time. Uh, so uh, apply online, but uh, you know there's something else that I'm not going to have time to touch uh, further in today's web uh, webinar is the network because if you have a good um, uh, you know you have done a lot of network and connected with the recruiters and the hiring managers. What that does for you is, if you are a qualified candidate, um, you know the recruiter will be able to review your resume to see, say, "Hi, I I know Vivian, and I talked to her. She seems has um, done a lot of uh, impressive uh, work in the HR, um, and I really want to review her resume very carefully." Um, that that you know that's the the beauty of network, right? Um, you get the recruiter's attention because the behind the scenes, many people. Um, apply for jobs, and they would say, I applied for 20 jobs or 100 jobs, and uh, I never heard back from um, from you guys what happened. So from the recorder side, you know, a, a lot of our jobs have uh, over 500 applications. So you might, you know, check all the boxes of the job requirement, and there might be 100 other applicants who also um, check all the boxes. So. Um, so the recruiter will have to pick from, uh, um, you know, the top to top. So sometimes uh, um, I was on the other side as well I, as the applicant, job applicant. Um, sometimes I, when I search for, I just feel that, that there are, um, I meet all the job requirements. How come I, I never got a call back, right? Are you guys just seriously uh, reviewing my resumes or just randomly? <laughs> um, the system will pick. Actually, our recruiters um, do review everybody's resume. Sometimes, though, because of the volume, you know, the typical uh, the typical time might be uh, you know under a minute, maybe thirty seconds. So it's very important when you apply, apply very strategically, um, and uh, put a lot of. I'm going to talk about your resume later, but it's really do a, a tailored resume to. Uh, uh, help the recruiter, um, you know, shortlist you. And once you apply, and then the recruiter likes your resume and puts you forward to to the interview. Um, so that kind of the sorry before the interview, in turn, in some of our roles we do have assessment. Not all the roles. Uh, for example, HR roles we usually don't. Uh, but for say customer service roles, we would just send you an assessment link. Uh, which helps us assess whether you are um, suitable to be client facing. So even though you might be, say, you are a very uh, tech guy, you are very technical, uh, tech savvy, but you might not pass our <laughs> assessment for the customer service. That doesn't mean that you cannot apply for other jobs. We just for this type of role, we require certain kind of the, um, you know, um, ability uh, to engage with our customers. So we're actually assessing that kind of uh, capability. Um, so after you your assessment passed, um, that's the interview phase for those roles. And the recruiter usually the recruiter call you and um, have a like um, maybe a thirty minute phone interview. And the recruiter will make their assessment and then decide whether to pass on your. Um, and pass you on to the hiring manager's face or not, um, and then you will be invited to the hiring manager interview. Uh, most of the time, it's uh, one person, and but sometimes uh, this role might uh, work with two different teams or might have a key stakeholder. So your hiring manager is really up to your hiring manager's um, option to, to invite other people to come to the interview with uh, him or her. Um, or sometimes we do have a panel interview, depending on the role. Um, and the, the benefit of panel interview is uh, it allows uh, you know people to have an opinion about uh, the candidate, um, have a very diverse opinion, right? So that helps us address our uh, sometimes the potential biases, the stereotyping uh, things. That, um, so we, if we we can, and if the people are available, uh, sometimes we do arrange that type of uh, panel interview. So for the offer stage, uh, usually the recruiter will call you and congratulate you, um, and we would uh, give you an offer based on a conditional offer based on the uh, success of your background check. 
when it comes to background check, uh, we get a lot of questions, you know, what do you check, right? <laughs> and how long does it take? It really depends on, um, usually uh, we will be able to complete within two weeks. If I say you are international, um, you're a newcomer to Canada, and now all your references are some schools or some um, you know, work history, uh, we need to connect with the, your previous employer. And sometimes it really depends on how fast is your previous employer or how fast your um, education uh, institution get back to us, and then we can validate that. So that's the, you know, we check your um, work experience, the education background. We also check, we do a criminal check. Uh, and especially as a bank, it's very important that we um, we have a very clear uh, reference, uh, the, uh, the clear um, criminal background check. And also, we do credit check. And that the credit check, a newcomer will say, um, I, just, uh, I just came to Canada, and I don't have a very long credit history. Actually, we're not focusing on that. What we focus on is whether you have been involved in any uh, kind of fraud activities. So that's uh, you know something we definitely want to avoid <laughs> hiring people into finance uh, financial institution um, because our customers um, uh, you know confidentiality is very important and also we want to protect our clients, uh, right? Um, so that's about it. That's a very um, quick summary of uh, how this uh, process works. And I think you might have some questions. I would just definitely leave some time for questions um, after, say, maybe 10, 15 minutes. But if you please do uh, feel free to. Uh, okay, so here you are. Uh, okay, please do feel free to um, uh, to send Sonia uh, the question, and then she will be able to filter out to do this. The good questions. Um, I one thing I want to touch on. Uh, it was in the previous slide. Is that when you apply, um, we do ask uh, you to um, to identify whether you are um, male or female, whether you have a disability, whether you are with a minority um, and LGBT group, okay, or indigenous. And the reason we ask those questions is not um, to discriminate you, but it's quite the opposite. We want to monitor our uh, diversity of practices, and those data actually uh, can give us insight. For example, um, if, uh, say, 20% female uh, um, applied to this role, and only maybe 5% of the female get interviewed. So we will come back and examine and see maybe there's something wrong with our um, shortlisting process. Maybe we have some potential biases. Right, uh, or maybe uh, you know, 20% get interview and only 5% get hired. That means maybe the hiring manager uh, have some uh, potential uh, bias. So that's the reason we ask those questions. And it's definitely not discriminatory. <laughs> uh, so um, and it's um, the the, uh, the uh, answer are very confidential. Only our recruiters uh, um, for certain roles can see those uh, answers in the. Some, uh, my team can see those answers, and so we sometimes uh, uh, would purposely say some uh, uh, businesses have in, uh, special hiring initiatives they, to hire. We want to give more opportunity to persons with disabilities. We would purposely promote those roles um, based on how you have identified the two different groups, um, and that's the reason we're asking those questions. Okay, uh, so yeah, Sonia, we can talk uh, a little bit about uh, resume. Um, yeah, so resume is it's very, very important. Um, sometimes the people ask, uh, you know, um, um, do I need a cover letter, right? Um, I would say at the recruiter stage, um, most recruiters will focus on resume, but when you your um, uh, candidates they get moved to the hiring manager stage for an interview or for selection. Um, your cover letter definitely helps. It really depends on the hiring manager preference. It really depends on the rule. For example, I am currently hiring on a contract role, and the cover letter is very important because I put on the job posting you have to be passionate about diversity and inclusion. Just the resume. Um, itself, unless uh, you know you formulate in a way to showcase your your passion, it's very hard because the resume is very 
uh, like uh, more processed, right? Uh, and it has bullet points. But if you had a current letter, it will allow you the opportunity to say, hey, why am I interested in the job? This is why I think I meet all the criteria and why I think it's, um, I'm, um, I can be a very good candidate for you to consider, right? So I, you know, so that's the, the I would say the, um, the reason you write cover letter, right? Uh, what we put in is so like a cherry on top and sometimes hiring managers might not have the top two candidate and they cannot apply. They might go back to their cover letter and say, hey, what do they say? You know, uh, maybe this person, um, you know, has better reach and communication skills. And you can showcase that in your cover letter, right? Um, but that's, you know, talk about resumes. Uh, resumes have to, you know, tailor to the role. If you are, say, if you are constantly applying for the same kind of roles, for example, I, I'm, I'm a project manager. I am, I have a generic project manager resume, right? Even in those cases, and you, all the roles you apply for our project manager, you still need to look at a job description and uh, highlight a few points um, in your experience that are relevant to the project manager that um, that's posted. Because, uh, you know, I um, if you can be a project manager for HR projects. You can be a project manager for finance roles. So, but if you, this role, this project manager is for HR. So if you have some relevant HR experience, that would definitely help. Or to show your understanding of the HR process, right? That would definitely help. So never use the one size fits all resume. Even though you're applying for the key qualities they're looking for are similar, but always try to highlight. And your job is to make it easier for recruiters to help you. So uh, highlight the key points you want the recruiter to notice. Um, be specific and quantitative. Uh, so do not only say, hey, I was um, a, a outstanding project manager, but you can say I once managed a project team of for you know of ten people delivered a one million or ten million dollar um, project. So that's you know quantitative and that shows um, you know the work you have done and the achievement you you've been able to make, right? Um, grammar and the spelling. Uh, we try to educate our hiring managers. They especially for in the case of newcomers, right? A lot of us are. Uh, including myself, the uh, English is not first language, and we make uh, grammar and spelling mistakes. But um, <laughs> what I want to remind you is, you might be a newcomer that made grammar mistakes, and you don't check. Uh, but there are other newcomers who, you know, they check, they do their homework, and their resume will look better than yours. So when it comes to competition, it's always the, the people that do the homework. Um, that gets the the opportunity more frequently, right? So that's something I want to remind you. So you're a newcomer, and a lot of our your current competitors are newcomers as well. So you're competing against each other. So that really comes down to uh, who does their homework, and that will also show um, your attitude toward work after you get hired, right? Always uh, uh, make that extra effort. Um, so um, if you are a newcomer and um, and a lot of our newcomers don't have committed work experience, and volunteer can be a good way to showcase um, what you, you can do um, and to get a sense of the uh, the Canadian workforce, uh, the Canadian um, workplace and the culture and everything, right? Um, and also shows that you're someone who's willing to give back, uh, to pay it forward, to help others. And that is a very, um, a very great uh, value that RBC definitely uh, treasures. Uh, so, it's, but make sure that your volunteer experience um, is relevant to the job you apply, and highlight to those experiences why it's relevant to the job you you apply. And if you have a, a very long working history and you don't have the space um, in your resume to talk about your volunteer, and add that to your LinkedIn profile, like um, that can be another uh, something extra that you can uh, you can share with recruiters and hiring managers, right? Um, so uh, something don't forget, is, and that happens a lot with our new hiring, they, and it might be a given, right? Everybody knows that you, know, you need to um, give a, a very um, current 
uh, address and uh, your phone number and email. But uh, it happens all the time because uh, people uh, send in their resume and forget to update their phone number and address. Um, and uh, even though they pass the recruiter uh, review and when recruiters call them, they don't, uh, they cannot reach our candidate. Uh, because newcomers, we uh, like um, when you come, first come to Canada, you might move a lot, you might change your phone number a lot, so kind of remember to update that information. Um, and the reason to save your resume in PDF uh, is possible. Some uh, companies, the recruitment sites, they allow you to upload to PDF, some don't. Um, but the, the, uh, the advantage of saving your resume um, in a PDF document is. Um, if you you uh, if you upload uh, with Word format, then some system, the recruitment system, might uh, change your Word um, format when it's being uploaded, and <laughs> the resume can look extremely messy, and that doesn't help you when recruiters are going through a uh, different bullet points. So that's you know something uh, just um, to to be considered when you uh, submit your resume. So, okay, so Sonia, if we could go to the next slide. Okay, so, um, um, you know, I actually touched on the, the one size fits all resume. I also want to touch on, um, because we're from different cultures and different countries, um, and in some of your home countries, maybe it's very important to indicate um, whether you're male or female, uh, where are you from, you know, how, um, your height and date of birth, the picture, marital status. That is a requirement. However, in Canada, it is not. It, it is, uh, you know, I would say, uh, please do not show those uh, because it's actually working against the employer um, if you show those information and uh, put it, uh, your potential employer at uh, the, the risk because um, uh, according to the Canadian employment law, uh, the employers are not supposed to make selection of candidate based on all those elements. We're supposed to, uh, you know, be very fair and um, remove the barriers for uh, certain underprivileged communities, candidates from those communities. So definitely we don't want to see those information because we want to evaluate you based on the job requirements based on your work experience, but uh, instead of you know whether you're female, whether you're married or not, so definitely a no no to that. Um, something else uh, I want to highlight is that do not write long paragraphs. Um, as I mentioned, the recruiters, you know, in general, they might have between 30 seconds to a minute review one resume. Try to use a short bullet point and highlight your experience. Long paragraphs get people. You know, people get lost basically. And if you're reading, put yourself in the recruiter's shoe. Uh, whether it's easier to find the qualities they're looking for um, by reading through an essay or long paragraph, or whether it's easier to read the bullet point, right? So your whole work, your whole job of writing a resume is to make it easier for a recruiter to help you. So always, always keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing is um, we get asked a lot, do we need to list references? No, because you want to save your, your resume um, with a space to elicit something that really matters. Does your reference matter? It only matters when we decide to make you an offer, right? Or you're in the last stage of the recruitment process. I have two candidates I cannot decide. I decide I want to um, call them reference, uh, you know, and to, to check if they're past the performance, right? And it's optional. It's uh, really uh, up to the hiring manager whether they want to do the reference or not. So uh, do not waste your, your space uh, and your resume to put, on the, uh, put those words in where you can really showcase maybe your volunteer experience or uh, some other skills that you, you, you're able to bring to the, to the job. And do not use jargon. Um, I know uh, sometimes we use jargon, and uh, there are so many acronyms. Uh, so do not assume, say, I'm applying for a tech role, um, unless it's you know very specific uh, you know system and uh, those apps. Uh, 
stuff and everybody is thinking, you know, the people who are uh, who interview you would it be or they put it on their job posting on that space to use jargon but uh, do not make the assumption that people would understand all your jargon so it's always good to uh to spell it out yeah okay so that's uh, something uh about resume i'm going to uh spend the next uh, 10 minutes talk about the interviews so uh Sana, if you can move on to the next slide mm, i would say um 70% of the uh, the interview uh, can be prepared, even including the interview questions, right? Um, the first couple of things, just to get it out of, out of the way, yeah. Uh, do the research of the company um, and the uh, and the hiring team. And a lot of the times, that people do ask why are you interested in the role. And if you have done a lot of research, you you can provide a very good answer, right? Why you're interested? Why I work? I want to work for RBC. Um, and what do you know about RBC? Do you know that we're um, the largest bank? And I did, did you know we had, we're the, largest, the best diversity employer? And all that. And maybe something in your element, in your area, say you're an IT professional, you can say, oh, I know that our RBC invests a lot in technology and you're leading the way in this, this, this. That definitely shows, uh, can you know make you stand out among the other candidates, right? And do not be scared to ask um, directions and logistics. Sometimes the, the recruiter or the hiring manager, when they uh, say, hey, congratulations, you're invited to interview. Um, and they sometimes would talk very fast. Um, and they, maybe and you didn't catch the, the, the address or uh, you didn't catch the, the person's name. Never, never be scared. Uh, to ask them to repeat and ask them to provide that information uh, in email so that because it's, you know sometimes uh, as newcomers maybe your English is not um, that good yet and you want to validate that do your homework and really it's also your right um, it's well within your right to ask those questions to make, to make it make this uh, interview day as less stressful as possible for yourself right um, and at RBC, we do provide accommodation for persons with disabilities. They can be visible or invisible. Uh, so if you need to require uh, the accommodation, uh, you are definitely encouraged to uh, to tell your recruiter. And never be afraid that if I ask, you know, say, um, does this building accessible or I need uh, some private and very quiet space, um, is that going to put me at a disadvantage? No, it's never. Um, all our recruiters are very well trained uh, in the uh, diversity and inclusion, and especially in providing uh, a person with disabilities uh, the accommodation they need to be successful in the interview. So do not have any hesitation when uh, you need accommodation. Okay, so um, the next slide, please. Dress, um, okay, so a dress professional, that's, uh, that's a given. What I want to, um, what I want to highlight here is, um, in certain, uh, countries, it's, um, it's good, or it's I even sometimes encouraged to wear perfume or cologne. Um, it's not in the Canadian workplace because, uh, some of our colleagues might be allergic to, uh, scents. Um, so we definitely encourage a, a scent-free work environment. So do not uh, uh, come to your in, in interview with very strong perfume or cool. So the other parts are very, you know, easy to understand. Uh, if you could move on to the next slide. So there are different kinds of interview. The full interview, what I want to highlight is. Um, uh, do your preparation and always, uh, you know, take it like you're having an in-person interview. And believe you, uh, believe me, when you smile on the other side of the phone, the recruiters can sense it. So try to have, I know it's, a, it's almost like a barrier, you cannot see the person, but try to be as engaged as possible, right? Uh, we, you know, we do not do video interviews a lot, but it, Sometimes, uh, you know, if the recruiter happens to be re remote or you happen to be traveling, but you're one of our top candidates, we do offer that option. So always uh, do the testing um, of uh, the uh, w whether the, uh, the the video, the connection would work, and always have plan B because it happened with us 
uh, many times when the connection doesn't work very well and the candidate didn't have plan B, we uh, we had to cut the interview short or uh, had to uh, you know change the the date reschedule. So that's the kind of unfortunate. Um, uh, make sure that you dress like in person interview and uh, um, avoid some kind of messy background. Right, it's always good to have a clean um, uh, background and it's that you know, to ensure that your conversation with, with the recruiter will be the key point instead of the recruiter. You might not want the recruiter to, to look at the uh, maybe a uh, poster behind you, right? So in person, um, be conscious of uh, what I want to point out for the uh, newcomers is the eye contact because um, we understand that, you know, a lot of uh, uh, immigrants from a certain cultures, eye contact is not um, a common practice that when you're talking to someone who's senior or who you want to show respect. And that's the same case in my culture, you know, uh, but in the Western, um, in the North American culture, eye contact means integrity, means honesty, means that you're confident. So you're, if you're not comfortable uh, with eye contact, try to practice before you come to the interview. Um, and uh, you know maybe practice with uh, with your family members and friends or in front of the mirror and just just get get more used to that kind of uh, uh, you know the, the, the Canadian way of uh, uh, connecting with another individual. Yeah. Uh, so next slide. Okay, so what kind of questions are usually asked? There are um, different kinds of uh, questions, and there are some standard questions, like I mentioned, that you can prepare. Usually, they tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, um, why are you interested in the role. And those are, you know, some common questions that, that um, almost all the hiring managers would ask. You know, try to prepare a concise um, uh, answer to it. And because when we ask those questions, usually it's to get the conversation started. We don't want you to talk continuously for 10 minutes when we ask the first question and then you go through all your work experience. Um, just, you know, uh, try to have your first to say, uh, tell me about yourself or why is the role interest, interesting to you. Try to, you know, put all the key points um, together maybe for a two minutes. And that kind of answer, um, that's good enough. Um, but also there are some uh, behavior interview questions that you can search. And we're all looking for similar um, uh, skills. For example, time management. Are you able to work with the team? Are you able to, um, to, uh, to set your priorities, right? Um, are you proactive? So there are a lot of behavior interview questions. The reason the employer asks those questions, you know, the past the behavior uh, would uh, a lot of times the fo uh, forecast that your future performance. So we would ask you, tell us a time when you had a, a disagreement with your colleagues and how you were able to um, resolve the conflict and uh, uh, deliver the results. Um, so for those kind of uh, behavior interview questions, so Samia, if you can move on to the next slide. Yeah, so it's it's called what you are, so like, you know, you tell me about the time when you went on about the beyond health customer, work at the pressure, and how did you, you made a mistake, how did you handle it? So there are reasons why we ask those uh, questions because it, we want to know whether you are the kind of person who would go and beyond. We want to know you are a, a like a counseling learning uh, and um, you are a, a goal getter. So those are the, uh, the kind of qualities we're looking for. How you would approach those questions would, I would say, the star approach. Uh, so that's a very uh, general um, way of uh, preparing your answers. So something if you go on to the next slide. So star approach, uh, star, S means a situation. So tell us a situation, what was the, um, what was the context basically, and then what kind of task you were given, what action you, you did you take, and what was the result. 
So basically, uh, they say, hey, uh, tell us a time when you had a conflict with uh, with uh, um, your colleagues. So you just say it was a kind of stressful. You know, everybody was trying to deliver. We were asked to come up with uh, some uh, solution for the customer, and uh, the colleague and I had a different. Um, um, uh, we, we had a, di a disagreement on the uh, the final recommendation we're going to give to the client, and how did you? Uh, work through your differences. Uh, maybe uh, you know you had different scenarios, and uh, maybe from uh, use data to help make decisions, or maybe um, you uh, each uh, take a part of your solution and uh, combine it as uh, the best uh, uh, option. And what was the result? We were able to impress our uh, our client, or something like that, right? So you take this approach that shows your ability uh, to work on a problem and achieve excellent results. So that would be definitely something we recommend. So next one, Sonia, if you uh, you can move to the slide. Okay, so never, never come to your interview without any questions. You know, because it shows that you're, if you have some good questions, some questions might already be answered during your interview, but some questions show that you are I'm curious, if you're really curious about the role and you have done some research about the role. Um, and there are, you know, there's no, like, uh, you can even ask, you know, um, it's within your right to ask, uh, um, you know, what's the salary? What's the salary, right? Uh, the recruiter might ask you during the interview, during the recruiter interview, what's the salary expectation? And as a newcomer, you might not know, but it's also on you to do the homework and the research uh, what's the, the range of this role on the market. And it's always within your right to ask you, so what's the range of the role? The recruiter might not even at that time have the idea of the, um, you know, what the, how much you're going to get, but it also depends on your experience and the, um, and the skills. But it's always a good uh, or even uh, it's, uh, it's within your right as a candidate to ask, what's the range of the role? So the recorder says, okay, it's so between 70 to 90. Then you have a good sense of, okay, where am I, you know, based on my skills, and then you can ask. Um, and it's always good to ask the next steps and timelines, and the higher the higher managers are obligated to tell you, okay, they're going to interview a few more candidates, but within the next two weeks, you should be able to hear from us. Yeah. Uh, next one, um, you know, it's good follow up. It uh, shows your 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 appreciate that other people taking the time to talk to you um, and um, inform you about the role. Um, and uh, it's actually um, very important uh, sometimes to to stand out from the other the crowd, right? If you are the only person who sends a thank you, um, it shows you how how you are as a person as well. Just to, um, appreciate other people taking the time. Yeah. Next one. So the offer, uh, like I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, you will be uh, given the uh, the compensation information and uh, talk about benefits. Uh, and uh, it's like I said, it's you are within your right to negotiate the uh, the salary. Uh, and sometimes for certain roles, the benefits. Um, do not be scared uh, because if you are given the offer, that means you're the best candidate, right? Um, and uh, if it's within their the hiring manager's budget, they would always uh, be willing to consider your um, your ask. Yeah, but sometimes they just don't have the budget. Maybe they cannot accommodate. So, um, so it's really up to you to negotiate. Um, the background check I mentioned, the workplace accommodation I mentioned. Um, always um, be not afraid to ask the first day details because that's very important for you to leave a very good impression. And sometimes, uh, you know, because the, the hiring managers are very busy, they might forget to tell you, okay, well, uh, this is what's expected of you on your first day. Then ask that question, so, you know, I'm very uh, and excited to come to work on the first day. What, uh, what should I um, be prepared? You know, as the uh, the contact person's name, maybe even the second contact person's name, just in case, right? Um, uh, who's going to be uh, greeting you? Who's going to be with you? So those kind of details are always, always uh, uh, within your rights and also good to ask. 
Yeah, so I'm going to stop here because I noticed that we only have 10 minutes for a QA. I will pass it back to Sonia, um, you know, as uh, I think people might have some questions. Yes, thank you, Vivian. Uh, a lot of information in a very short time indeed. Um, so everyone, I'll give you guys a few moments to type in your questions into the questions tab and we'll start taking them. Um, all right, so I'm going to start taking questions. Um, so just so everyone knows, if you do want to work in Canada, you do have to have either a work permit or a PR. Um, you will not be able to get a job offer or even considered for it without that. Um, so Vivian, people are asking, can we do, can we still apply from overseas and will we still be able to get interview calls while they are overseas? Yeah, so you are definitely definitely within your right to apply. It really depends on how urgent the hiring manager needs the, the role to be filled, right? Sometimes our recruiters say for the high volume roles, they might be recruiting for the, the they are now doing the interview calls, um, but it will uh, be uh, for uh, the class in winter. So that definitely allows you to come in and settle in Canada and uh, uh, do the training and then to be hiring the role, um, we definitely would uh, would um, consider. But if the hiring manager needs the role to be, uh, to be started within a month, most likely the preference would be given to someone local, uh, unless you have some skills that are that um, the Canadians don't have. Uh, people who are here, it's hard to find a uh, hard to fill role that we would. Uh, um, consider uh, the, the people who are still award Yeah. Thank you. Um, a question from Aditya is that he has an IT background, but not in the financial sector. Would he still be able to work uh, at RBC? Definitely. So IT is IT, right? Mm, you don't have to understand the, the, the banking side. So I work in HR, but I don't know anything about the banking. Just I'm just like a regular customer, right? <laughs> I don't know the very fine details about um, all those offers we have. So and IT is IT, coding is coding. So definitely you are eligible to apply for, for the IT job in our Perfect, thank you so much. Um, everyone wants to know if you are going to get a recording. Yes, you will all get a recording of the webinar so you can view it after as well. Um, a question here from Salmina is, um, Sorry, I'm not understanding. Um, what what uh, falls under the category of a visible minority? Sorry? W who falls under the category of a visible minority? Okay, so based on the Canadian um, employment equity law, visible minority's definition is that you're non-white by color, you're non-Caucasian by race, and then you're not indigenous. So basically, um, <laughs> it's hard to really uh, cut a line, but if you, you're you not like myself, I'm not white by color, I'm not Caucasian, I'm Asian, and I'm not indigenous person of Canada, so I am an invisible minority. But that definition is quite, um, you know, in today's DNA uh, world, it's quite a dated. Um, um, hopefully the government will update because uh, with more and more immigrants uh, coming into Canada, um, you know, the, the workforce, the, the immigrant workforce are no longer minority anymore. So uh, it's almost 50-50 and in the next uh, 15 years, um, there will be more immigrants. So how the Canadian government define that, um, it's, uh, it's a really an interesting topic for them to explore. Thank you. Um, so, okay, so NS wants to know how many pages should a resume be? Um, my recommendation is that if you can stay within two page, mm, that's good. But if you are a student, say, um, you don't have enough work experience and to put um, the voluntary experience, um, one page is also okay. Um, I think uh, usually two page would be good enough. And sometimes you say, hey, I, I worked in my home country for 20 years. I have so many roles and I have so many things I want to highlight. Um, I would recommend um, 
give more details to the roles and experience that's relevant to the job you're applying. That's why customize your, your resume is so important and highlight the, uh, the skills um, that's relevant to the job. Um, and for the, the roles that are, say you are now a um, senior financial analyst, but you used to do you know, very junior roles like uh, payrolling or um, some, some kind of help people to fill out their tax, right? So those kind of jobs. So one liner is enough because then you have a lot of other jobs that you, you, uh, you want to save the space for. So those uh, very early entry level jobs, you can just have one liner. I used to work um, for as a, some kind of maybe tax agent or whatever, uh, and it, uh, this is the, the company and this is the time. You don't even need to have bullet point for those. So this is how you structure your, your resume and give the, uh, the space to those um, experiences that are important. And if you do not have enough space, I always use your LinkedIn profile as something extra to showcase who you are. Thank you. Um, next question is from Mobisa. Wants to know, should, can you put survival jobs on your resume? For example, if you worked as a general laborer? Uh, I, you can. Um, and uh, like I said, um, you, you know, um, it's up to you to um, Say, okay, so you're applying um, the RBC sales and the service jobs, right? And um, and this job requires a lot of uh, interaction with people. And in your survival job, say, um, even uh, like a volunteer or even the general um, the receptionist, that job gives you the experience of working with people, right? And also maybe um, you're, um, you're a sales clerk as the shopper. And that might be your survival job, but actually um, you can uh, get a lot of uh, experience. I even practice your English, right? Uh, you notice that you understand as a newcomer, language might not be um, a strength. And so I use those survival jobs to practice my English. Uh, and you can, you can really highlight those experiences there. Uh, so it's really up to you to, you know, the, the, the function and the importance resonates with how you can showcase you are the most eligible candidate for this job, right? And the, the relevant experience, uh, the more relevant experience you can show, the better. Thank you. Um, Shivani would like to know if uh, the IT department at RBC has any work from home culture at all. Yeah, we do. Yeah, um, uh, it's very, uh, we have very flexible uh, work arrangement. Uh, some people, and uh, even uh, for HR, we now we have the free addressing um, working style. Basically, you, just, you don't have a fixed desk, and people just come in and uh, have uh, sit at whichever desk that they want to. And uh, because of the limitation of the, the, the office space, that sometimes some team actually encourage you to work from home. A few days, but also, you know, uh, people have needs of people like a, if someone with a disability or even have a family um, obligations, uh, they need to pick up their kids. As long as they're able to complete the job, we're okay. So you might take, take a few hours to go to a doctor's appointment, um, but uh, later on you come back, you stay maybe an hour later, um, and then you complete what you're assigned for today. We're totally fine with that. Perfect, thank you. Um, we're gonna take one last question only because we're all uh, towards the end of our um, webinar today. So Amar has a question is that, in a lot of quest, uh, applications, they ask for gender, race, and all this information separately, then why can't we provide this information on the resume? Because that information we're asking um, when you apply, that's very confidential. So we want to protect that some people, they're, um, they're okay to, to, to share that information, and some people, they're not. So we, we make that information extremely confidential, and our recruiters do have, the, um, do have this ability to it. Uh, because we want to promote, we want to break the barriers for people from uh, certain disadvantaged communities. 
However, if you put those information on your resume, um, it wouldn't help at all, and it would put your potential employer at uh, some kind of a compliance risk or a legal risk because we um, we 100% want to assess you based on your skills and experience, not based on your gender or um, your marital status or your age. Perfect. Um, thank you, Vivian. Thank you so much. Um, I know that there's a lot of questions. We didn't have enough time to answer all the questions, but you can email your questions at online services at accessemployment.ca and we can forward them over to Vivian and she will be more than happy to help us. And in any case, there will be another RBC webinar. So all your RBC related questions um, can be answered in that. Um, if you there might be some questions that we can easily answer through our past RBC webinars. So if you go to our Access Employment website, click on e-access, you'll see over there that we have all our RBC previous webinars up there. So you can uh, watch those or you can check out different tiles and we've got different resources that you can check out um, with job search tips um, relating to resume interviews networking and more um, our next RBC webinar is called your brand matters and uh, there's going to be a panel of people uh, who are called RBC future launch champions and they will be talking uh, about uh, how effective how to make your brand effective and how much it matters um, our next webinar just overall is the next webinar on Thursday it's called jumpstart your new career in Canada and how to quickly climb to the position you deserve it's an amazing webinar by Connor Valentine who's already done a webinar with us previously um, I just saw the webinar slides last week and I'm really excited about this one for sure so make sure you register for this one as well um, and if you're on your way to Canada and you have your PRs and if you fall under any of these categories, uh, please email cec at accessemployment.ca so they can start helping you with your job search in advance before you even arrive in Canada. Also, if you are thinking of opening your own business uh, and you're not in Canada yet, you can still apply for our pre-arrival entrepreneurship connections program as well. And add us on Instagram. We are very active on our social media. We are now on Instagram as well. So if you want to know what's happening at Access, whether it's online or in person, follow us on our social media because we don't post this stuff on our website. So we are on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Follow us and find out what's going on in store and Vivian thank you so much again for hosting uh, the webinar today we had a huge turnout lots of people were interested um, and if we were not able to answer all your questions today we will make sure that we can answer them later for the next RBC webinar as well or you can email us and we will try our best to answer all our questions um, Vivian would you like to say anything before we uh, shut off yeah, thank you, uh, Sonia, for having me again. And like uh, Sonia mentioned, uh, my next uh, webinar will be in September. And we will dedicate that webinar to all the uh, frequently asked questions from you. So if you have uh, some questions you want us to touch on, please do email your questions to Sonia, and she will definitely make sure that gets sent to me. And I will prepare those answers for you. So look forward to uh, uh, you know connecting with you in September. Uh, for my next webinar. Perfect. Thank you so much, Vivian. You have yourself a great day. And everyone watching, thank you so much for joining. Um, have yourself a great day ahead or evening ahead. Bye-bye now. Bye. Thank you.